This week on Waterways. Wastewater treatment and lack of treatment in the Florida Keys. The commode, toilet, head, John, the potty. Many people consider this the magic hole. Once it flushes, that's it. No more worries. But how much do you really know? Like most, you probably don't want to know. You'd rather look at the pretty fish. But if you want to see this, you have to know about this. If you want to do this, you must learn about this. If you want to preserve this, you simply must pay attention. The fact is, water quality in the Keys is not what it used to be. The public needs to understand that without clean water, the earth is not a habitable place. And the water that we have now is all the water we're ever going to have. It's very important that we keep this water clean. The problem is caused by many factors. Stormwater runoff from roads, bridges, and yards contaminate our water with undesirable nutrients. Wastewater from cesspits, septic tanks, injection wells add nitrogen and phosphorus to our waters. Liveaboard vessels dump untreated waste into marinas and harbors, and yes, even domesticated pets are partially to blame. Residents who have lived in the Keys their whole lives have witnessed the degradation of canals, nearshore waters, Florida Bay, and especially the coral reefs. Previous studies have shown and documented water quality problems in canals and nearshore waters. Uh, th these problems are typically associated with high levels of bacteria, fecal bacteria, in surface waters. Uh, however, these studies have not shown a, a clear uh, link or a clear uh, correlation with the decline of the reef and land wastewater discharges. While no direct correlation has been proven between the health of coral reef ecosystems and untreated wastewater, coral reef communities evolved in a low-nutrient subtropical sea environment. The continued existence of this ecosystem is dependent upon the maintenance of relatively low sediment and low nutrient conditions. While the Keys have been facing a pollution crisis for decades, it took the beach closures in the 1990s to motivate the public. When water off Keys beaches tested positive for fecal coliform in the 1990s, the public was justifiably concerned. The presence of fecal coliform bacteria is used as an indicator that human waste may exist in a tested area. Coliform bacteria in themselves are not a major health risk, but simply an inexpensive indicator of other intestinal disease producing microbes that are a health risk. Specifically, the consequences of untreated wastewater can lead to illnesses such as Shigella, Salmonella, E. coli, hepatitis, dysentery, just to name a few illnesses. While there are 80,000 residents in Monroe County year-round and 130,000 during season, there are an estimated 3 million visitors per year. From all around the world, people flock to Key West and the Florida Keys. With them, come their germs and microbes. The Keys basically have a substrate which is composed of lime rock, and which is basically fossilized coral rock, and it's very porous, which means that uh, any discharges you know, from septic tanks, uh, cesspits, and injection wells you know, will uh, travel or migrate through this uh, porous you know, substrate and eventually will reach surface waters. If the island chain that comprises the Florida Keys consisted of sand, gravel, and soil, wastewater treatment would not be so crucial. However, the decomposition that occurs in nature does not have the chance to occur as wastewater travels through the porous limestone substrate. Thus, the contaminants damage the environment and affect public health. 
The goals of wastewater treatment are to protect the public health and the environment. But the immediate goal is to reduce nutrients and pathogens in wastewater. There are two main problems associated with wastewater pollution. Fecal contamination, which is a health risk, and nutrient enrichment, often referred to as eutrophication. While fecal contamination may make headlines in the papers, eutrophication may be the slow and silent killer. Uh, nutrients uh, such as uh, nitrogen and phosphorus are uh, uh, substances that uh, they are essential for the, uh, for the uh, proper functioning of living organisms. However, in excessive amounts, uh, they create a nutrient enrichment condition that can result in, uh, they can promote algal growth and they can result in a depletion of oxygen that uh, it's needed for aquatic organisms to survive. Nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus are essential for the normal healthy functioning of all living cells. The growth of plants is generally limited to the lack of one or more of these nutrients. New plant growth is dependent upon the recycling of nutrients bound to the cycle. In this manner, an ecosystem maintains its balance. However, new nutrients in foods, drinks, fertilizers, and drinking water are imported into the Keys every day. If these new nutrients get into the surface waters, they become available for use by marine ecosystems. The, the overgrowth of algae does a number of things. It, um, it reduces the oxygen level in the water, which is bad for the fish. It, uh, it uh, uh, blocks the sunlight from getting to the corals. And, and also, at the end of its life cycle, uh, uh, algae will, uh, will release toxins into the water, which is bad for everything. If sources of nutrient enrichment continue unabated, it is likely that the ecological balance of nearshore communities of the Keys will be changed. Seagrass beds located near the mouths of some degraded canal systems exhibit signs of eutrophication. Changes in the structure and function of nearshore communities could result in stresses to other components of the Keys ecosystem. Since the economy of the Keys is directly linked to a healthy ecosystem, it is imperative that sources of excess nutrients to this ecosystem be eliminated. Historically, development in the Keys relied on the use of septic tanks and cesspits, which provided little treatment to domestic wastewater. While upgrades have been made, most of these still exist. Current estimates indicate that there are 25,000 septic tanks, 9,000 cesspits, and 900 shallow well systems. A cesspool is basically a hole in the ground that accepts raw sewage, or it could be a malfunctioning septic tank. Um, many times it's influenced by tidal flow, and it does not allow enough time for sewage to treat or settle. Therefore, it goes straight into our nearshore waters. There are a number of uh, wastewater treatment systems available in the Keys the, uh, in the old days and are still in use. You know, we have uh, septic tanks and uh, cesspits, which basically provide uh, no treatment or little treatment. Septic tanks typically consist of a settling tank and a drain field. Wastewater first runs from a sink or a toilet to the holding tank. In the tank, the heavier solids settle down to the bottom to form a sludge layer. These solids that settle to the bottom need to be pumped out regularly. The lighter solids, grease and oils, float to the top to form a scum layer. The liquid wastewater, called effluent, flows from the tank into gravel-filled trenches in a drain field. There it is distributed via perforated pipes and then treated by the natural soil system. The soil acts as a biological and physical filter to remove harmful substances. However, even properly functioning septic tanks remove very little nutrients from wastewater and, depending upon their location, effluent from septic tank drain fields can rapidly migrate to surface waters. More advanced system that has been uh, available you know, for, for many years in the Keys is the uh, secondary treatment. All the existing wastewater treatment plants that the DEP uh, regulates meet uh, secondary treatment. Secondary treatment, it's biological treatment. Uh, basically, the sewage is digested by microorganisms uh, in, uh, in an aerobic condition. That uh, results in about 90% removal 
of suspended solids and the biochemical oxygen demand of the waste. The most efficient treatment systems available are the Advanced Wastewater Treatment Systems, also known as AWT systems. These systems can remove both nitrogen and phosphorus to a greater extent than a secondary treatment system. Nitrates are removed by a biological process known as denitrification. Yeah, the uh, denitrification usually relies on the release of, uh, you know, on the reduction of, nitri of nitrates, which uh, results in the release of oxygen, you know, from the nitrates. Uh, and eventually, you know, you get nitrogen gas, you know, which is harm harmless, you know, to the environment. To remove nitrates, the wastewater must be starved of oxygen. Thus, under anoxic conditions, denitrifying bacteria utilize the oxygen contained in the nitrates, thus converting the nitrates to odorless nitrogen gas. Phosphorus is removed by a chemical process wherein the phosphorus settles to the bottom and is removed when the sludge is pumped out. The removal of nitrogen and phosphorus is not a complex process. While advanced wastewater treatment systems remove these nutrients, septic tanks and cesspits certainly do not. Stresses from nitrogen and phosphorus overloading have been proven by science to be detrimental to nearshore marine communities. Upgrading from a primary sewage treatment system to a best available technology system is the solution. While a majority of residents in the Keys do not have systems that remove these nutrients, compliance is not optional. In 1979, the Florida Legislature identified the Florida Keys as an area of state critical concern. And what that did was it forced Monroe County to adapt, adopt a comprehensive land use plan. And what that meant to the health department was the requirement to eliminate cesspools. In response to state mandates, Monroe County spent two and a half years compiling the wastewater master plan. The master plan is the initial step towards satisfying water quality directives designed to improve the quality of the canals and nearshore waters surrounding the Florida Keys. In addition, the Florida Department of Health and the Florida Department of Environmental Protection co-chair the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary's Water Quality Control Protection Program Steering Committee to develop wastewater treatment and disposal standards for the Florida Keys. This effort resulted in Section 6 of Chapter 99-395, Laws of Florida, which requires all new and expanding wastewater treatment facilities to meet best available technology standards for nutrient removal after the effective date of the law, June 1999. This law also requires all existing wastewater disposal systems to meet the best available technology standards by year 2010. Because the Keys are so diverse socioeconomically, environmentally, and demographically, no single wastewater solution will meet the needs of the entire community. Part of this solution is the separation of the Keys into hot spots and cold spots. Hot spots, like Bay Point and Marathon, are areas where analysis indicates central sewer systems prove cost effective and environmentally sound. The hot spots are areas that will receive a community wastewater collection and treatment system by the year 2010. Cold spots are located in lower density areas of the Keys. A cold spot like Shark Key, Big Torch, and middle torch are required to upgrade or replace existing on-site systems with on-site wastewater nutrient reduction systems. If you are in a hot spot, you have the option of using an interim standard system. What is an interim standard st system? An interim standard system is a system that is not designed by an engineer registered by the state of Florida. It's considerably cheaper. In a cold spot, you, were, you will be required to install a performance-based system. There are some residents who live in hot spots and have faulty septic systems or systems that are deemed illegal because of the lack of nutrient removal. They argue against upgrades because they know central systems are just around the corner. In areas scheduled for central sewage, our hot spots, there are bridges for compliance that will allow the property owner some relief from the performance-based standards. The citizens of Monroe County are not expected to fund this project on their own. Because the Florida Keys are a state and national treasure, 
state and federal funding opportunities can and will be aggressively pursued. The bottom line is, it can be done. Key West has been a shining example of what is possible if the community cares enough. I have to say that Key West is leading the way with the improvements they made on the plant and the amount of money they spent. They didn't have to do it, they wanted to do it. And they are leading the way in Monroe County. Uh, there is a county master plan that has been developed uh, and it's been done for about the last 18 months. And the rest of the Keys are interested in improving their wastewater treatment capabilities and hopefully they'll see Key West as a, a beacon lighting the way. The Key West Advanced Wastewater Treatment Plant is recently upgraded to an even higher standard of treatment. In addition to the increased disinfection of the released effluent, the water that is returned to the environment is now pumped far underground. We take our highly treated effluent and pump it 3,200 feet below the surface of the earth into an impermeable boulder zone. Uh, that well is cased most of the way down and being below the boulder zone, the water isn't allowed to upwell uh, right where it's injected. The theory is that our highly treated effluent won't see the daylight again until a uh, hundred years has passed. While well, Key West took the necessary steps to treat the wastewater that entered the central plant, city officials found problems that occurred before the waste could get there. Well, most of the Key West sewer system was built in 1940s, in the 1940s, between 1940 and 1947. It was made out of clay and uh, cast iron and ductile iron. I've even seen some steel pipes in the ground. Well, clay is very brittle and, and tends to crack and break over, over time. The uh, joints go bad and root intrusion causes the pipes to burst. The uh, steel pipes uh, rust, basically, and, and disintegrate. Since the 1990s, when the problem was first recognized, the city of Key West has replaced over 46 miles of main line and 27 miles of lateral pipe in just under three years. Well, the problem with leaky pipes, both on public and private property, is that the uh, contamination finds its way to nearshore waters very quickly. Uh, we've, there's been studies in the Keys that show leaky private property systems end up in canals within 11 hours. Pipes leaking human waste into nearshore waters were only half the problem. As tide levels rose, Cracks would leak the other way, allowing saltwater intrusion into the system. This saltwater would then travel to the central plant, creating more of a demand and higher costs to the system. In most all the cases, when we dig them up, we're, found, we're finding that the cast iron lines are uh, cracked or, uh, or damaged and uh, have holes in them, have roots in them. And when the homeowner flushes their toilet or runs their sinks, the, the, uh, the, the waste is going down the pipe and some of the waste is getting out of the pipe into the, into the ground and, 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 and uh, therefore into our table water. But the pipe just basically deteriorates. You can see how it just falls apart. And once they get through it, don't snag. Just flakes right off. It's cast iron, should be pretty sturdy, but you can just take it and break a piece right off of it, like paper. As Key West officials rushed to replace faulty pipes, another detractor to nearshore water quality came into focus, stormwater runoff. It was found that contaminants in stormwater runoff contribute substantially to the degradation of nearshore water quality. In fact, stormwater runoff is the second largest source of nutrients in nearshore waters off the Florida Keys. In some instances, it goes into, a, uh, in a, into an inlet and is piped directly to nearshore water without treatment. In other instances, it simply runs down the street and runs off the island because there is no stormwater system. Um, in both ca cases, picking up contaminants along the way. Runoff typically contains substances like organic debris, silt, nitrogen, phosphorus, metals, and oils. Stormwater also showed signs of fecal contamination. We've done uh, steroid testing that shows the level that 
due to birds and the level that's due to, to dogs and different, different types of pets. From my perspective, looking at the test, you can see that animal feces is finding its way to near shore waters. There will never be a total absence of fecal coliform in our environment. All warm-blooded animals excrete fecal coliform, whether key deer or seagulls. However, there is yet another source of nutrients that is not part of the cycle. Discharges from liveaboard vessels. Sewage discharges from vessels degrade the water quality of marinas and other confined water anchorages. In June 2002, the US EPA declared all state waters located within the boundaries of the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary a no-discharge zone. Not only land-based wastewater and stormwater discharges are being addressed, but also uh, boat discharges. Uh, the no-discharge zone essentially prohibits any uh, discharges from vessels of treated or untreated sewage. While enforcement is difficult, Many steps have been taken by local and state enforcement agencies. In Key West, three new officers were hired in the last year to address illegal marine dumping. Some misinformed citizens have expressed concern with new wastewater treatment plans. Antagonists to clean nearshore waters wrongly think that treatment plants and upgrades will enable further business development and residential population growth circumventing ROGO ordinances. The truth is, these claims are unjustified because the rate of growth is stifled by many other factors. There are other considerations or other factors that are probably as important or more important than sewage upgrades in restricting development in Monroe County. One of them being a hurricane evacuation considerations and also the need to protect uh, sensitive habitat and endangered species. Um, <clears throat> uh, even after the proposed sewage upgrades are completed, these considerations will remain as important factors to control growth management in Monroe County. The bottom line is, Keys residents must properly dispose of their sewage. While nutrient inputs from those sources external to the Keys may be greater than the loadings from wastewater and stormwater emanating from the Keys, this does not diminish the importance of focusing on local sources. How can we preach to upstream sources when we cannot even take care of our own waste? If you don't invest in water quality in the Keys, we will lose our economy. The tourists will, won't want to come to a city that's uh, contaminated with, with their own feces. Only by complying with the wastewater master plan will changes begin to take effect changes that protect public health, encourage recreational use of surface waters, and sustain the local economy. The bottom line is, it can be done. If you can pay for cable TV, you can pay for sewage treatment.